of course, the national anthem of Prussia, of course, typical march kind of songs back in the 18th, 19th centuries. So anyway, I'll be back. Of course, Daniel Simon, uh, Baton Rouge Community College. Uh, of course, History 1123. Uh, of course, first seven weeks class, of course, this is. So everybody said I had a great weekend overall. Had a bunch of good NFL games this weekend. If you saw them, or not, I don't know if you did. But uh, anyway, of course, this week I'll be moving on to talk about uh, more about absolutism. I think I've already given you some uh, previously recorded lectures on I know the rise of absolutism in Europe, uh, I think France already, and I think I gave you also the Habsburg empires uh, to look at as well. Uh, of course, this week I'll mostly talk about Prussian uh, and Russian uh, absolutism. I was kind of confusing. What's the difference between the two, you know, Russia and Prussia? But I'll kind of go into that because there's a difference, of course, between those two different states uh, overall. So I think it's going to be a good meat of the whole upcoming first exam. Uh, that we're going to have. So anyway, yeah, I did want to go through and talk about a few uh, announcements before I kind of get into the you know lecture today uh, overall. But I know y'all got a bunch of assignments. I know it's a seven weeks class. Everything's compact, you know, uh, and all that in the semester. But uh, I know they have the Reformation quiz. That's getting ready to close in a couple days. Uh, so try to wrap that up. And then really the two uh, quizzes you need to be working on this week and next week uh, is the expiration quiz. Uh, and also the one on the conquest of America. Of course, I did last week that lecture. Uh, so uh, that's the main things I need to get get to next. And I have started a discussion on the conquest of America study guide questions. Uh, I think I'm there already. If you want to help me with that one, uh, kind of go through those and we can narrate that uh, as well. Uh, the answers to those. So anyway, uh, talk about, of course, a few things today. It looks like we've got a few students uh, watching right now. And uh, I know uh, Trey's watching right now. We're having a, we had a great weekend too, Trey, uh, as well. And then also Diamond. Hey, what's going on, Diamond? Uh, we're having a great afternoon uh, as well. So everybody's doing it. Had a great weekend, uh, of course, the last few days. So uh, anyway, um. Like I said, today uh, I'm going to get into and talk about the rise of Prussia you know, or the Prussians. I like to talk about Prussia because uh, on my father's side, that's where they were from. My, my father, I think my great grandfather immigrated from Prussia uh, in the 1800s uh, and all that. So I've got half German, I guess. But um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about that mostly between the 17th and 18th centuries. So I'll, I'll, I'll spend a little time also talking about some of the later rulers they had too, like especially after Frederick the Great. I'll kind of go into that uh, as well. Oh, Theodore is also joining us. Hey, didn't see that, but hey, what's going on this afternoon uh, as well? Uh, so if you have any comments, questions about the lecture, you know, during the live stream, let me know, you know, if anything you got in for you. You can always leave me comments, you know, comments later or whatever on my channel, or you can also email me if you got a question about, about the class uh, as well. Um, well uh, yeah, cool. yeah, that's good, Theodore. That's good. So anyway, um, so if you want to drop, oh, by the way, join me at StreamYard.com. There's the link below uh, as well to join me. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can also uh, do that as well. So anyway, um, like I said, we're going to talk about the rise of, of Prussia today, which, of course, you can see there, Frederick the Great, probably one of the greatest rulers uh, of Prussia, made them really a major power. Uh, in, in the 18th century. Uh, so we'll kind of talk about that period and probably go beyond that. Before that, we'll kind of go back to the, talk about the 17th century when that state really got going uh, and all that. Uh, and um, yeah, Prussia, um, of course, will later lead to a kingdom. Of course, we see here the kingdom of Prussia was a state from 1701 to uh, 1918. Uh, and then for a while, for, I know from 1871 uh, to 1918, uh, it was actually part of the German Empire. So it was called the Second Reich or German Reich, uh, as they called it in Germany. Uh, it was actually part of like Germany, like there was a Prussia, like a part of part of the, even the Third Reich, you know, under Hitler later on up to like, I think 1945, 46, uh, before it kind of doesn't exist anymore, of course, Prussia now, uh, but it was a part of Germany for a long time, uh, for many years. Um, of course, um, 
kind of get into the background of Prussia. Prussia was ruled by this uh, dynasty that's called the Hohenzollern dynasty. It's a dynasty that went back uh, kind of like to, I want to say the late Middle Ages. Uh, and um, they're kind of like a, eventually at one point, at least up to the 18th part of the 19th century, kind of an absolute monarchy uh, for a while where their kings had kind of almost total power of the state. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, uh, they call it different names. Uh, Prussia was known as like, um, you know, Brandenburg. Prussia was an early common name. I'll kind of get into uh, and explain like why that is. But you go here, this picture here, uh, the name Hohenzollern is actually named after a castle. It's also a mountain called Mount, I think Mount uh, Hohenzollern as well, which is in southwestern Germany. An area called ba Baden-Württemberg is about where it is. But that's where the name originated. A lot, a lot of dynasties name named their, you know, uh, their house after a, basically after a castle that they lived in. I think the Habsburgs did that, and I know the Windsors later named named their dynasty also after Windsor Castle, you know, as an example. But yeah, where, where does the origins of the name uh, Prussia come from? Uh, well, uh, there's kind of theories about that, uh, where the name came from. But originally, if you go back to like the Middle Ages, uh, there were these Teutonic Knights that were called uh, Old Prussians. Uh, and um, I guess they fought in Germany in, in the Crusades. And so hence the name kind of being you know, used over time. I think there's another theory that you work with the word Russia. Uh, that one of the names they called the people that settled Russia were the Rus or the Rus, sometimes spelled R-U-S, uh, which were like the Vikings originally. And some people think the word Prus was also P-R-U-S, uh, was maybe another word for like Vikings that kind of came into Northern Europe, like during the Middle Ages uh, and all that. Now, Prussia itself as a state uh, develops like in the 30 years, where I think we kind of talked about this when we were kind of going into the 30 years where we were kind of mentioning how a lot of states started to become independent that were part of the Holy Roman Empire. And that's one thing that does happen, uh, where this state kind of emerges after the peace of Westphalia uh, in 1848. And so that's, oh, excuse me, 1648. So that's kind of, you know, when you start seeing really all uh, this, this kind of going on. Uh, it's actually two states. Uh, there's one state uh, that's called Brandenburg, and they have another state called Prussia. Well, Brandenburg is mostly located in the northern part of the Holy Roman Empire, or northern Germany. Uh, you can't see it there where it says Brandenburg, Prussia, at the top above Holy Roman Empire. Uh, and then to the east, you can see it's right above Warsaw, right there, where Poland, Poland Lithuania is. That's what they call Prussia, or some people call it East Prussia uh, as well. Both those were actually separate states. Uh, that, that form, you know, opposite of each other there. They kind of form together through intermarriage, uh, like kind of, you know, through marriage, kind of, kind of, you know, eventually merging into one, one state uh, over time. Uh, in fact, the original, they have different names are called, like the, the one Brandenburg is sometimes called the electorate of, of Brandenburg, but you'll see sometimes another name, which is, I think, Margravate, yeah, Margravate, of Brandenburg with Berlin as its main city or capital. And then the Duchy of Prussia, which is like I said, I told you that's kind of like above Warsaw there, uh, East Prussia above Poland. Uh, and uh, its main capital was uh, Konigsberg. And Konigsberg was originally one of the early capitals of Prussia uh, before uh, they kind of moved it over towards Berlin and Potsdam. But uh, Konigsberg is not part of Germany anymore. It's now part of Kaliningrad, which is because of World War II. I think the Soviets kind of created that little state there uh, that's there now. Uh, but that's where basically it was. Now, I'll kind of go into some of these different uh, rulers that were kind of famous with the Prussian state. Uh, of course, one of the first that they always talk about is Frederick William, uh, the great elector, as they called him. Uh, he was the ruler of Prussia from 16, 1648, 1640 to 1688. And the reason why he was called that was because of the fact that he was not only a great ruler, you know, kind of like politician of the state, uh, but he was also known for his military, you know, traditions. 
he helped pretty much develop the, the Prussian armies that would be famous, you know, throughout throughout Europe, because uh, Prussia is known for its soldiers. Uh, you know, the Prussian soldier was high, highly sought after, like his mercenaries, uh, etc. Uh, and um, that's something they're kind of known for. He, he's kind of like the early founder of the Prussian army, you know, et cetera. Uh, and so, uh, but he's not a king. Uh, he was actually the elector of Brandenburg. And I think he was like also the Duke of uh, what is Prussia. So those are kind of his titles uh, that he went by, but he's kind of like the prototype to the later Prussian kings that'll uh, later, later take over. So he's like one of their first absolute rulers that they really have uh, in, in Prussia. Uh, and um, you study about the Prussian military. A lot of the nobility uh, were these uh, nobles that were called Junkers, usually pronounced with a Y. Uh, it means in um, German, uh, young noble. Uh, and um, a lot of them owned like a lot of the farmland. And many of them were actually the officers that were in the Prussian armies. Uh, they often you'll often see him with the um, surname particle of von, like von Richthofen or Otto von Bismarck or something like that, von Moltke, uh, and so it's like a, I guess it's not a title, but it's 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 an indication of their you know noble background that they had. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the, if you study about the uh, kingdom, the kingdom of um, of Prussia, you know, itself, I guess the German Empire uh, later that they have, uh, they had they had nine monarchs total, uh, which of course, begin after, you know, Frederick William dies. Uh, and of course, the last three, which we'll get to later, you know, the last three were, were actually called emperors, or what they call it, Kaiser, so the emperor of Germany, which I'll kind of go through a few of those later who they were, uh, that they had the Prussian monarchs, by the way, they didn't reign from Berlin. They reigned from Potsdam. Potsdam was the capital of the state of Brandenburg. That's where they actually had like a lot of their palaces. Like the one behind me, you know, uh, that I showed you earlier, of course, which is San Suci. That's one of the famous palaces, of course, that they had. One of several, of course. So they reigned from basically there. And Berlin was the actual capital of Prussia and then later Germany uh, also. Now I'm going to kind of go through and talk about, you know, some of the early rulers, of course, that they had that came in. The one, of course, one of the first that would take power would be Frederick the uh, First. He, of course, would become the first Prussian king. Uh, he reigned from 1701 to uh, 1713. Uh, he wasn't crowned in Berlin, like you, you would think, of course, or Potsdam. Uh, he was crowned at Königsberg which I told you is where Prussia actually is, Prussian kingdom originally, uh, January 18th, uh, 1701. I think I've got an image showing you the actual coronation of Frederick I. Uh, and um, part of why he was able to uh, become king, uh, his actual real name is not Frederick I. That's the name that he took. Uh, his real, real name was actually Frederick III, uh, the Duke of Prussia and the Elector of Brandenburg, the son of Frederick William, of course. But um, what happened was at the time um, there was a war going on. Uh, the the uh, emperor in Germany of the Holy Roman Empire, uh, who was Emperor Leopold I, he actually recognized Prussia as a kingdom, uh, known as the part of the so-called Crown Treaty of November 16th. Uh, 1700, when it was, I like, guess, signed by Germany, the uh, Holy Roman Empire. And uh, part of it was the fact that uh, there was an issue where um, there was a war that was getting ready to break out, uh, which was called the War of the Spanish Secession. And apparently, uh, the King of Spain, who was Charles II, didn't have any children. Uh, and so, you know what happened? He decided to give the throne to a bourbon which was kind of shocking, you know, at the time. And so he gave the throne to Philip of Anjou, who happened to be, by the way, the grandson of Louis XIV. Uh, and so Spain, you know, basically would go Bourbon, would become part of the Bourbon dynasty, both France and, you know, Spain, you know, side by side. So that was kind of shocking about that. And that created a big, big bloody war, you know, throughout Europe and 
so Emperor Leopold, you know, I told you he had uh, helped, you know, create this. He wanted to bring Prussian forces and help help him, you know, fight and get back, you know, Spain uh, to be Habsburg again. And so um, a lot of it was due to Prussia's support of the League of Augsburg, uh, which Emperor Leopold I uh, formed to fight, you know, Louis XIV in France. And so that's how Prussia kind of emerged as a state uh, later uh, because of that. So it wasn't really much known for too much else uh, except that, you know, uh, but that's basically what he was known for. Uh, then later, of course, the second king that came in uh, after that uh, was Frederick William the First, uh, as he's called. Uh, he was named for, of course, his grandfather, Frederick William. Uh, really, Frederick William the First is considered to be one of the most absolute uh, of the different Prussian military kings, military style kings. Uh, so very, very conservative ruler, very harsh, uh, especially against his children. He had 14 children uh, at one point. Uh, Frederick William the first and uh, during his reign um, the Prussians really start to kind of expand their military one of the, the things that he's known for uh, Frederick the William the first is he's one and actually what you may have heard of is the Canton system is something that the Prussians used for a long time uh, between the 18th century up to like the Napoleonic Wars uh, where they basically broke Prussia up in the different recruiting districts, which they called a canton. Uh, and so each, I think, basically district would have to, to recruit, you know, like a, so many soldiers, uh, basically, uh, to fight. And so that forced a lot of men to enlist uh, into basically the Prussian army. And so Prussia became like this militaristic state. Uh, it was kind of known for. So by the time he went of his death, supposedly, you know, when he died well, in 17, 1740, uh, Prussia had like something like 80,000 troops, uh, which at the time was one of the largest armies on the continent of Europe, I guess, minus Britain. I think France, France and Russia, I think, had the two largest you know, armies uh, on the continent, along with, I think, the Austrian Empire and then Prussia itself. And that's amazing, the fact that, you know, basically, uh, Prussia at the time, like especially in that that you know period, I guess around the 18th century, you know, anyway, their population was only like 13th uh, in size, like large large size, you know, compared to the rest of Europe. So not even top 10 population size, and they they got a, an army that that's that large uh, overall. Oh, uh, there was an old saying about Prussia that they used to say in the old days, I guess going back to the 18th 19th century. The old saying was, Prussia is not a state that possesses an army, but an army that possesses a state. Uh, they don't know who said it. Well, it's kind of kind of unknown, uh, but it's a famous quote that kind of summed up the Prussian military and its traditions and all that. Uh, one thing about him that was kind of an odd thing, he had this uh, imperial, kind of like, almost like an imperial bodyguard that he founded that was kind of famous, uh, that was kind of well-known. Uh, throughout Europe. It was known as the Potsdam Giants. Uh, and of course, a lot of the Germans called it the Longfellows. And it was a special regiment in the Prussian army uh, where it had taller than average soldiers, uh, men that were like, I think at least a minimum height was like six foot two. So you had to be six foot two. Back in those days, you know, average man was probably like closer to five foot five, five foot six, maybe in that range. Maybe five and six, basically. And uh, there were cases where a lot of countries like Russia, Austria, and other countries would actually send tall soldiers to uh, Frederick William the First uh, to kind of as a form of you know make peace with different with his country um, by sending these men. Uh, and uh, there were actually some men that were, um, I think, the tallest soldier they had was seven foot one, believe it or not. Uh, and the king, the king himself was only five foot three, to give you kind of an idea. Uh, Napoleon did the same thing too. Uh, you know about that. Napoleon uh, had like an imperial bodyguard, and a lot of the men were taller than him uh, as well. Uh, and I think that's where they got the idea that Napoleon was kind of short, because Napoleon was average height, about maybe five foot six, 
He wasn't really short. It's now be short now, but not not then. Uh, if you know much about uh, also uh, about him as well, he had a famous son. Of course, we'll talk a lot about today. Uh, he was well known, uh, which is Frederick the Great. Uh, Frederick the Great, of course, was his main son uh, and heir of the throne. I told you that Frederick William the First had fourteen children. We get eight eight sons, six daughters at one point. I think he was the third son. But the, the, uh, two, others, two other, other, earlier sons had died. And so Frederick was the one that really uh, would become the heir and later king of, king of Prussia, of course. One of the greatest kings of Prussia, of course, in history. But he had a very rough uh, relationship with his father. His father was very harsh uh, and uh, would you know beat him if he didn't do what he wanted. Uh, and I think early in his life, I know Frederick didn't really want to be, a, he didn't want to be king uh, and he didn't want to be a soldier. Just kind of uh, funny about that 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 story. But um, talk more about Frederick the Great. Um, there was this incident that happened under his father that's well known, uh, which is called the Von Cat Affair, which happened in 1730. Uh, and apparently there was this deal where he had this relationship with uh, this young lieutenant uh, in, in the military, Prussian military. There's rumors that they were lovers, because you know, if you've heard the story about Frederick the Great. Some people think he was gay, which it's kind of been debated still. But they're not sure that's true or not about him being gay or not, but maybe. Uh, but apparently um, he, he and his this young man wanted to run off, leave, leave the country and flee. I forget what country they were going to go to. They were going to leave Prussia. Uh, but he was caught. Uh, and his father actually had him imprisoned and actually court-martialed his own son, <laughs> believe it or not, and actually had Von Cat killed had him executed, uh, and he was going to execute him, too. He was going to kill Frederick, his own son, uh, but the uh, emperor, I think Emperor Charles VI, lawyer and emperor, intervened to stop it. So, so anyway, but yeah, uh, he's, of course, later called Old Fritz, or, or if you want the German, Der Alt Fritz, of course, is what he's often, what a lot of the you know, Germans called him uh, years later, uh, but he was definitely one of the greatest rulers of Prussia, and definitely the longest reigning, reigned close to 46 years uh, in power. Now, we're going to get to a bunch of things that he's uh, known for, uh, Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great uh, was very famous for his reforms. Uh, he often would call himself uh, the first servant of the state because uh, he kind of viewed himself as this ruler that was there for the people, uh, and not like Louis the Fourteenth, where it was like I am the state, uh, that kind of thing. And of course, he saw himself as an enlightened despot because he was big into the Enlightenment, the Age of Enlightenment. Uh, he wanted to study uh, different kinds of culture. He loved French culture. You know about his whole library at Sans Souci uh, is nothing but French works, all in French. Um, so he could speak French. Uh, he wrote music. Uh, he was also known for playing the flute. He was pretty good at it, uh, apparently. And he corresponded with a lot of the uh, intellectuals of, of the Enlightenment. And you know the story about he was friends with Voltaire. Uh, that's kind of uh, well well known uh, overall. Uh, one of the big things that's important, I'll kind of show you a, a map of, of Prussia at the time, but the thing that he's uh, most important uh, with doing is he was kind of instrumental in combining the Prussian lands uh, into one powerful German state. That's something he begins to kind of do, kind of consolidate them uh, instead of like being broken up into different states. And then also another thing he did in 1772, he was the first ruler to use the title King of Prussia because the previous two, the previous two rulers, uh, you know, Frederick I and Frederick William I were known as King in Prussia because Prussia was Remember that that East Prussian province uh, that was above Poland, but didn't include Brandenburg. So he's going to combine all that together uh, into basically one state uh, overall. Uh, another thing about Frederick, which is important, uh, he was also known for giving a lot of uh, religious freedom uh, to different minorities in the country, like the Catholics. And he helped to emancipate the Jews. A lot of the Jews looked up to Frederick the Great because uh, he, he started to emancipate them 
uh, give them rights. They could even go to college, things like that. Uh, he abolished serfdom. Uh, he abolished torture. Uh, and so he was trying to make Prussia look like Austria, uh, or like because Emperor Joseph II, you know, was trying to do that in Austria and their empire. And so he's kind of trying to emulate him uh, overall. Uh, he also was known for doing a lot with the law code system of Prussia. He had this uh, code system that was called the Frederican Code uh, that was developed in the 1790s. And so he began to modernize the, the, the Prussian law code system. Uh, they even, he even created the, the civil service system uh, in Prussia. But uh, the um, a lot of your uh, law code systems, if you know about it, uh, were heavily influenced by the Justinian Code, uh, which was in the Byzantine Empire originally, and it, it later influenced the um, Napoleonic Code uh, that would develop uh, in the early 1800s under, under the French with Napoleon. Uh, also, uh, he was known for education reforms. A lot of people don't know about that uh, with Prussia, but he did uh, create like the first compulsory education uh, for like men and women uh, in Germany. Uh, there were different kinds of schools that were set up by him uh, that are famous. I kind of wanted to mention about which are kind of still used uh, in different parts of Europe. But uh, they created like an example of some of the schools. They had the real school you may have heard of. Well, they have these two different types. They have the real school was something that they started to develop the Germans, which was like a secondary education, uh, which would be for like trades or skills. So you would start out like in the fifth grade, like the age five, I think is when it started. You went up to 14 and you'd learn some kind of trade, basically, is what you would do. And then they had what they call a gymnasium, which was like a kind of like a college prep school, uh, which you would start like at the age of 14. Uh, and you would basically go for like, I think, six years is what it would be. Then from there, you'd go on to like university. Uh, but they basically separated people into two kinds of schools, like kind of like a trade, kind of like a technical school versus say a regular college, but it was kind of like the idea of what they were trying to do. So that to prepare people, you know, throughout Germany for uh, later life, you know, different occupations or whatever. Now, I think I mentioned he, he, like he modernized the bureaucracy of Prussia, uh, he developing like the Prussian civil service and things like that uh, in Germany. Uh, as well. So those are just different things that he was kind of known for, uh, Frederick the Great. Now, the one thing that a lot of people don't know about Frederick the Great uh, was that he was a military genius. Uh, here's, of course, a famous kind of an image of Frederick the Great at battles like the Battle of Luthen uh, and all that. And so a lot of people saw Frederick the Great uh, as this uh, military genius, kind of comparable to like a Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, he's like the statesman, but he's also a general uh, leading troops in the battle. Uh, he also had numerous occasions where he had horses shot out from under him. <laughs> uh, and um, the one thing he was known for, which was real, real famous at that time uh, in the 18th century, uh, was he popularized this uh, military maneuver called the Oblique Order, uh, which I think I've got an image showing that uh, right here. And oblique order is a type of military tactic that a lot of armies started using in the 18th century. Um, these are like military tactics where basically you would try to attack an enemy's flank. Uh, it was a type of a type of tactic that was invented by the Greeks, like in ancient times. Uh, you may have heard of the Battle of Leuctra in 371 BC, uh, where Thebes defeated Sparta uh, in a battle. Uh, by flanking them, I think on their right flank, I think it was. Uh, and I think Alexander the Great kind of used tactics like that too, where you would try to attack the enemy's flanks and all that. And so that's that's initially where it came from. And this was a very famous battle uh, that took place. The Battle of Luthen was really his greatest military victory, where he defeated an Austrian force that was twice the size of his, like two to one odds. Uh, and so... That's the one thing about a oblique order attack. Uh, you can really defeat an army with a smaller force uh, if you can quickly move and attack their flank. Uh, so it's something that he's known for uh, overall. 
Uh, it's not as great a success. If you know about the Seven Years' War, the, the um, Prussians didn't fare well in that war uh, compared to the Site of Egypt Wars uh, that took place uh, in the 1740s. Uh, the Silesian Wars uh, were a series of wars that took place mostly between the Habsburg Empire, which uh, was ruled by uh, Maria Theresa, who you see on the right of the top, and then Frederick the Great, of course, of Prussia. Uh, and um, those two, by the way, didn't like each other. In fact, well, I think Pro I think Frederick kind of liked her. In fact, I think he had this deal where he wanted to marry her, uh, but she couldn't stand him. Uh, I think she made the famous comment that Frederick the Great is that evil man, <laughs> was I think what she said. But they were involved in several uh, Silesian wars uh, in the so-called uh, War of the Austrians Secession. They were involved in the so-called First and Second Silesian Wars. Uh, and uh, basically, they fought over a territory uh, that's called Silesia, which you see is in that red area in the map, kind of sandwiched between Poland and Bohemia. Silesia was actually a territory that was part of the Holy Roman Empire. You can see Prussia starting to become this uh, organized state in the north. He basically invaded and took it. Later, he would take Saxony, too. He invaded that, too, uh, as well. Uh, but he would seize that. And uh, Prussia wanted Silesia because of the fact that it was rich in um, natural resources, you can see. Coal, copper, iron ore, lead, and zinc. Uh, and it would help to kind of build the German Empire later. Because uh, I think the Germans control that to like World War II uh, at one point. So it helps to kind of build their war machine, you know, uh, over time um, with that. But yeah, because the that's one thing about it, you know, because of these wars, which, you know, they continue into this, you have the Seven Years War later that you have where you have a so-called Third Silesian War where uh, Maria Teresa tries to get it back, which he never did. And so because of the hatred between, you know, Austria and Prussia, what ends up happening, it causes later what they call the diplomatic revolution uh, to occur uh, in the mid 18th century in Europe. Uh, and what was the diplomatic revolution? Uh, well, I'll show you a map here of uh, what happens, but in Europe, there's a changing of the alliances. Um, and what happened before was that Austria at one point had been allied with basically Britain. Uh, and then uh, you have this deal uh, where they begin to kind of switch. I'll kind of show it right here. But Austria switched from Britain. They were together with Britain. And they switched to being allied with the French. Uh, and then Britain, uh, which had been allied with Austria, uh, which Hanover is kind of part of Britain because the Hanover dynasty controls Britain. But um, Britain would, would basically switch to being allied with Prussia, which made sense, you know, because Britain, Hanover, and Prussia are all German, like in Northern Europe, you can see there. Then Russia later also aligns too with Austria and France. Uh, so you get this, this happening. And so that, that's what you're going to see later. You're going to see this so-called Seven Years War, which we'll talk about another day, uh, 1756 to 1763. You get Britain, Hanover, Prussia versus France, Austria, Sweden, Russia, Spain. So it's there one of the first world wars uh, in probably modern times later that you'll have. So Fred, Frederick doesn't fare well. That's one thing about Frederick. He doesn't fare well, you know, during the Seven Years War. In fact, at one point, uh, Prussia gets overrun uh, by multiple countries, Sweden, Russia, Austria, I think France overrun him at one point, uh, but he some, somehow survives. Uh, the war. Uh, Frederick, by the way, bore no children. He had a wife. His wife was named Elizabeth of Brunswick, uh, who I think he didn't really like. I think his father had forced him to marry her. <laughs> and so, so that's why some people think he was gay, because uh, of the Von Kat thing, and then didn't have any kids with his wife. And so that's where all the speculation came from from that. But they're not sure if that's really true or not uh, about that. Uh, of course, I've got some other images to show, of course, of Frederick the Great. Frederick the Great was known for his 
building projects uh, like of course San Susi, of course you're looking at here is this famous uh, summer palace which was built in the 1740s it's a type of rococo style uh, palace that he constructed which is where he's buried by the way uh, Frick the Great uh, and uh, so yeah he of course famously built that uh, as a palace I think I showed images in the beginning of this video on that. You know, it was known for its gardens, by the way. It's part of it uh, as well. There's the grave of Frederick the Great uh, at San Susi, which is in Potsdam, by the way. I uh, also he built this other palace a little later, uh, right, right in this later part of his reign, which is the new palace at Potsdam. Uh, it's another Rococo late type French Baroque style, style palace. Uh, and um, that one might be more famous uh, than the other one. It's much larger of a palace uh, that he constructed. So well, let me get into, uh, of course, there's a, probably the most famous image, by the way, of Frederick the Great, like in his old age. Uh, I know that was a very popular painting. Adolf Hitler liked that painting. You know that? I don't know if you know that or not, but I think when he, right before he died in his bunker, he was famous for having that painting in his bunker. But anyway, but let me go ahead and for a few minutes, I'll kind of go through and talk about the later rulers of Prussia. These, are, these you don't really have to know about, but I'll kind of just go through them and kind of talk about, because they did have other rulers. That's only like three of them that were kings or monarchs that we talked about. But yeah, they did have a bunch of other rulers uh, that were famous uh, as well. Uh, the one on the left that you're looking at, uh, which is King Frederick William II. Uh, that was uh, actually uh, Frederick's nephew. So Frederick the Great, his nephew, became the monarch. Uh, and uh, he ruled till 1797, uh, you can see. And he, he's the one that's very famous uh, for building uh, the, the Brandenburg Gate, uh, which you can see right here, which was originally where the main gate was into the city. Uh, of Berlin, and of course, a very famous, famous landmark, uh, probably one of the most famous things you can see, of course, in Berlin today. It's been kind of probably rebuilt a few times, I imagine, especially because of War II and all that. But um, yeah, that's basically you know that. And then the the, the monarch on the right uh, is Frederick uh, William the Third, basically the, basically the I guess the grand nephew of Frederick the Great. Uh, he basically, um, he was the actual monarch during the Napoleonic Wars. Was, you know, he ruled kind of through a difficult time when Napoleon invaded Europe. And at one point, Prussia was kind of controlled by the French uh, and all that. So he had to kind of fight off Napoleon uh, and all that as a ruler. Um, this other ruler, of course, King Frederick William IV, uh, another ruler, basically a great grandnephew. Uh, Frederick the Great, uh, he's the one that in the 1850s began to convert Prussia into a constitutional monarchy. That's something you start seeing uh, at that time because Prussia goes from absolute state uh, to a constitutional monarchy, which a lot of that was caused by the revolutions of 1848, uh, which racked Europe at the time. And so they realized that they had to kind of make reforms in the state and give people more rights, like the right to vote and things like that. Something you start to see in 19th century uh, Prussia uh, overall. So he was king also to 1861 uh, right there. Uh, then what happened was, uh, as you know about Prussia, uh, they helped to form later, uh, which will be the German Empire, uh, which by the way, uh, the German Empire formed after the uh, Franco-Prussian War. Uh, which happened 1870-71 against France. And so you get this German empire that's created afterwards. And so you have three German emperors, which the, the Germans call, they called the um, emperors Kaisers. So the word Kaiser evolved from the word Caesar, you know, from the Roman emperors a long time ago. Uh, and um, the German empire, by the way, was... Um, later known as the Second Reich. Some people call it that, or they simply call it Germany, uh, or if you want the German name, Deutschland. It's, of course, the German name they called it as well. But they had German emperors up to 1918 that you're looking at. I'll kind of go through them real quick, just kind of for a few minutes and talk about them, and that's it. But 
Um, yeah, the top, the one at the top left is very famous. Uh, that would be Kaiser Wilhelm the first. He was originally king of Prussia, Prussia originally, uh, but after the Franco-Prussian War, uh, he became the first Kaiser, uh, 1871 uh, to 1888. Uh, and we see on the bottom left there, uh, he's famous for appointing Otto von Bismarck as the first chancellor of Germany, uh, which was in 1871. Uh, and I think Bismarck was the chance, first chancellor of Germany from 1871 to 1890. We'll talk about him later. They call him the Iron Chancellor, if you know about that. And he helped to form the German Empire. He was kind of the brains behind it, if you know about that. And then uh, the one in the middle, the top, uh, we have Frederick III. He was the second Kaiser of Germany. He actually uh, became the ruler uh, after his father, Wilhelm I, died of a stroke. In 1888, but he had cancer, and he like died like within, within like a hundred days, uh, right afterwards, which is kind of weird. Uh, so he only reigned in 1888, uh, and then the, the ruler on the far right there, he had a son, of course, which became Wilhelm II. You know, I think I think most people know him more than any of the later Kaisers, uh, who because he was the ruler during World War One in Germany. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, you've probably heard of him. Uh, he was ruler of 1888 to, to 1918. Uh, and so it's kind of weird how that came about. 1888, they had the so-called year of the three emperors, believe it or not, when uh, there were three emperors uh, at one point. But we'll probably talk about Germany later because uh, I'll get to, you know, Wilhelm II is going to be the last of the German emperors. Uh, later, you know, Germany gets in World War I. Uh, they end up losing the war. And so the Hohenzollern was forced out of power uh, in 1918. And so Bill II later abdicated, if you know that, about that, and fled to the Netherlands. Uh, so that that's later, of course, you know, when that all happens uh, with, with Germany. Uh, but uh, that's where it all started with the Prussian state. You know, start they're basically the, the prototype state to uh, what we now call Germany today. Uh, that's why it's kind of important, I guess, now. But the actual Prussia doesn't exist anymore. Uh, especially after you know, World War II. So anyway, uh, that that's pretty much it for today. I think Abigail, I think, had, hey, what's going on? And get to say, hey, uh, but that's it. But uh, as a reminder, before we go today, uh, we've got a lot of assignments out there. You know, don't forget about that. I think I told you that. I think the current assignments we got now, the Reformation quiz, I know is going to close in a couple of days. Uh, but the main ones I need to work on now, of course, are the exploration quiz. I did post the Canvas, a uh, new Canvas quiz on the Conquest of America. We'll start working on that now. Uh, that one's due. I think y'all's vocab is coming due soon. I know. I think I moved it up, but I, know, I think it's due Friday or something like that coming up. But I'll kind of send out reminders about that later in the week. But y'all can start posting that whenever you want uh, on that assignment as well. And I know it's compact, but this is a seven weeks class you know, as y'all signed up for. So I know it's kind of difficult, but um, I, I am starting a discussion right now, of course, uh, on the uh, Conquest of America Conquistadors lecture. So if you want to earn some bonus points there, uh, I have posted that already uh, right now. So that's it for today. Uh, like I said, we're going to move on later in the week. I am going to be uh, talking about, by the way, I'm going to be getting into Russia next. We'll talk about Russian absolutism on Wednesday. Uh, all those different czars you may have heard of uh, that are kind of well known, like Ivan the Terrible, you know, things like that. We'll kind of we'll talk about mostly Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, though, uh, overall. But I'll talk about those, of course, rulers later. Uh, and I'll send out announcements about it whenever I get to it. So y'all take care. I'll see y'all, of course, later. So y'all y'all have a great rest of the week. Bye.